All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Peter Renna back with another edition of Dollar Bin Digging. As I teased last week, this week I'm going to look at some Star Wars books. Now, I know basically every Star Wars book out there has gotten hot at some point, you know, at one point or another. Like basically, there isn't a book out there you can you can you know find easily these days. But that said, there really are. There, there's still stuff out there that people miss and people just overlook because they are chasing whatever the hot book of the day might be. And there are so many good Star Wars books out there that while you should be picking up basically anything you can find for the cheap, uh, there are just a few that you might just want to pay special attention to in case you come across them. Now, please, uh, I hope you're liking these videos. You know, I'm putting them out on my channel as well as Tales from the Flip Side. And please read the article on comicbookinvest.com where you know, I'm giving you the breakdown of you know, prices and recent sales and things like that. So this way you can see uh, you know, what these, some of these books that I'm pointing out are doing and uh, give you some sense of what you might be able to do if you find one and sell it. Or if you're looking for one, how much it might cost you in case you can't find it in uh, dollar bins near you. So with that said, please stick around and uh, we'll see what books we got this week. All right, so first up, I'm going to kind of look at these books, uh, you know, in different kind of categories almost. And the first one is I'm kind of looking at a character just to kind of keep an eye on. And this one is, first one I want to look at is uh, Darth Krait, uh, whom you can see right here. Uh, very interesting look to him, a pretty, pretty awesome, you know, Sith. This is a guy that has a ton of potential, and uh, there is a slight tie to uh, the upcoming High Republic Adventures book, where you can see there's a character that has a similar, you know, crate mask, uh, you know, mask that the uh, crate has on here. That you know, maybe there's a tie uh, in there somewhere. But now we should all know by now because this book has heated up uh, quite a bit over the last, uh, you know, few months. But he first appears as Darth Crate in uh, Star Wars Legacy One. There are uh, three prints of this: there's a first, there's a second, and a third. Uh, all of them are worth grabbing if you can find them at a decent price. You're not going to find them in dollar bins. So, uh, I mean, if you do, you know, bravo. But that these days, these are mostly gone already. Uh, but just so you know, that is the first for Darth Crate, as well as uh, originally he was a character that went by the name of Asherad Het. I don't know if I'm saying that properly or not. Uh, he was a Jedi. He was a Tusken Raider. He had a very interesting backstory. And that character first appeared in the uh, Star Wars Outlander series uh, from Dark Horse way, way back. Now, this was uh, there's some contention over what his first appearance might be because it's not really named uh, in that. Now, some say that it might be in uh, Star Wars 7, which if you were to find it, it doesn't say Star Wars 7 on the cover. It says one of six. Because uh, with Dark Horse, they started with like a six-issue miniseries, and then they started the Outlander as the second uh, mini uh, towards that series, but renumbered it like halfway through. And they basically went from one out of six, which was issue seven, I think two out of six, and then I think they went to nine, ten, and just started numbering like a normal uh, series would be as opposed to uh, continuing to group these as miniseries. So some say that he might have appeared as one of these Tusken Raiders in issue seven, and uh, others point to issue ten uh, with him on the cover uh, again, Asherod Het there. So it, it's up to you. I'll keep an eye out for both. But again, these are books that have already been kind of picked pretty clean out of the dollar bins, but still something you should be aware of. But something that you might still be able to find, find in those uh, cheap bins or find on the cheap out there is uh, Star Wars Legacy 22. It just, got, again, has a great cover. Uh, I pointed it out here. Uh, this is not the regular cover of it. The one behind me here, this is the version that where it also came in a toy pack, the combo pack. Uh, two pack of uh, figures, and this was the comic that they uh, included. So this is also something you can find uh, find out there if you if you look, because uh, this I found this one. Uh, so it's just an awesome cover. If you look at it, it's just the close up on the face it is well done, and uh, it is a striking image. And again, if something happens with the character, you can't get a hold of all those uh, first appearances, but you may be able to get a hold of something like this, which is just you know a gorgeous cover that could have some uh, some interest down the line. So again, the regular twenty two or this uh, combo pack version uh, that came with the toys is another good one to keep an eye out for. And even if you had to buy them, uh, you know, out on the market, they're not that expensive right now. So just something to keep in mind. So moving on, our uh, next book is I'm going to kind of look at the character of a uh, uh, Demigol, the Flesh Carver, uh, which ends up being the name, and uh, he's 
he first appeared in uh, Knights of the Old Republic, which is another series that, again, if you find any copies out there, just just grab them these days. Because uh, while everybody's looking, you know, the ones, the nines, forty twos, and you know, there's a ton of issues out there that are uh, thirty one, ton of issues that have already spiked and gotten hot uh, over the last you know few months. But grab basically any from the run. Like this one here is already heated up as well. Issue eight, you're not going to find that in the cheap bins. But that's the first appearance for uh, Demigol. Uh, you can see here. Shows up in this issue. Uh, so again, very cool character. Runs through the course of this series. Uh, is a great villain and something. You know, who knows if the, they're going to touch upon this in any of the shows or movies or whatever in the future. Just, but it is still a very cool character. And Star Wars collectors are different than most other collectors. So, just the basis on the stories and the comics alone, uh, characters that are popular continue to remain collectible as time goes on. I mean. Uh, you look at a lot of these books have heated up. There's no rumors. There's no mention of any of these sh characters showing up, but these uh, things are still desirable to the uh, true Star Wars fans out there. So as I noted, uh, another thing to kind of look out for in a book that's kind of gotten hot, like semi-recently, and this is the issue 48, which has a gorgeous cover with Demigol on the cover, and uh, definitely one to pick up. I know I was grabbing this uh, for the cheap well, months back just because I liked the cover. I thought it was kind of cool and figured, you know, I'd just grab it when I saw it. So, uh, and that one started to heat up uh, as of late. But the one that was hot, and I feel like it's kind of cooled down again uh, recently, is the final issue of the series, which is issue 50. Now, a lot of times the final issue of a series, these things become instantly collectible because they are, you know, the last issue. Whether it be because print run is, you know, you know, had lowered by the time that the series got canceled, or if it's just the end of the story, uh, they're just not as easy to find in some cases, or people just want that final issue because they want to know how, you know, the story wraps up, or as the case is here, you know, we feature the death of some important characters from this, uh, from this run, including the death of, uh, Demigol here. So, uh, if, if you needed spoilers for comics that came out, you know, over, you know, a decade ago, yeah, I apologize, but this stuff is all out there. Uh, so you should have read it if you wanted to, you know, to read it by now. Uh, but that said, this doesn't, you know, keep spoil the uh, interest you should have in trying to check these stories out. So uh, hopefully that doesn't deter you from going and picking them up. But this issue 50 is definitely one that I would keep an eye on for because it still sells pretty well, uh, but it's not completely, you know, unreasonable. And uh, it's still a book you might be able to sneak, you know, you know, cheap out there because it doesn't have a particularly grabbing cover and uh, it doesn't, you know, stand out in any way as this at this point in time. So let's keep an eye for that issue 50 for right now. So, moving on. Now, we all know everybody is uh, looking forward to Thrawn, myself included, and everybody's rushed to uh, Air of the Empire, which I don't uh, fault anybody for doing so. But I think something that everybody forgets is that even though Air of the Empire 1 is the first appearance of Thrawn, and it's definitely a book that you're not going to find really cheap anymore, uh, but it's still one you should keep an eye out for, you know, to add to your collection, I think that... Most people are forgetting the rest of the series. Uh, I know issue four of that series is starting to heat up because of uh, the Mara Jade kind of like talk and rumors. And this is, a, I think, her first cover. So this book has gotten hot lately uh, within like the last month or so, the Heir to the Empire issue four. So again, keep a lookout for those other Heir to the Empire issues. But the ones that I'm actually pointing out here, or I think you should keep an eye out for, is the, are the other series. Heir of the Empire was part of a trilogy around Thrawn, and uh, Heir of the Empire was basically the first book. And then the other two books were also adapted into series, and that's Dark Force Rising, which was a six-issue series that continued the story you know, with Thrawn and uh, you know all of our favorite characters. So, you know, again, issues one through six, some gorgeous covers here as well. But and then there's also, you know, The Last Command, which is the final book in that series as well. Again, another mini series that was ran, you know, six issues, you know, one through six. So keep an eye out for those issues because I see those a lot out there for cheap. You can sometimes find them in collected, uh, you know, bundled up at some shops too, where you might, you know, pay, you know, 10, 15 bucks maybe for all six issues, which again, I know it's not dollar bin technically, but that's still relatively cheap, all things considered. So if you can get like an entire mini like this for that kind of price, I recommend you just scooping it up now and just tucking it away because even if it doesn't get adapted into anything like that, it's still a worthwhile read and it's just something good to have in your collection. So again, just keep an eye out for the Dark Force Rising and the Last Command minis as well because while everybody's looking at Air of the Empire, everybody I think forgets about the other two uh, minis you know, along the way. So with that, I'm going to follow that up, and with our last pick, 
which is going to kind of tie into the upcoming uh, Cassian Andor series. Now, again, we know he's getting a series. We've seen still frames, and we've known about it for quite some time. It's going to take place before Rogue One, obviously, you know, for obvious reasons. And, uh, and by now, we should all know that you know, Rogue One, the uh, comic adaptation, is his first appearance. And still one that's not that difficult to find you know, out there on the cheap. There's a ton of covers for this thing, by the way. I mean, apart from the regular cover, which is the one you'll probably most easily find, there's the action figure cover, there's the uh, movie cover, which is kind of cool. I know that heated up for a little bit. Um, then you got the incentive variants, uh, which I think is like 1 in 15 maybe and 1 in 20s. And there's, you know, Terry Dodson. That's a pretty pretty cool cover there. And I'm not saying you're going to find these for cheap. Really, that cover A is the one you're going to find in the cheap boxes. But it's still just good to know the other covers out there because it can get confusing when you see different covers all for the same book. Especially if you somehow find them in those cheap boxes. You go, what is this? Is this the cover? It's not. You just just be aware of the different covers. And I think by now we also all know that that Walmart book that came in the three packs at Walmart is another one that is pretty tough to find, actually. And uh, one that sells uh, pretty well. And uh, it you know, looks nice, too, when it's outside of the bag with that kind of like movie poster kind of, a, kind of feel uh, to that cover. Uh, but I think another one that a lot of people forget about and uh, something I grabbed... Uh, you, you can find them out there online. Uh, they're not too bad. Is the Wonder Woman Comics uh, cover, which kind of looks like that mail away, uh, you know, Star Wars toy mail away. So it's like got that action figure cover, but it's uh, got that cool, uh, you know, kind of secretive uh, mail away kind of vibe box to it. So uh, that is another one to, you know, keep an eye out for. Again, that's not a dollar pick. That's just something that I'm just saying is it probably a good, uh, good idea to keep an eye on because in case this book does pop more than it already has. Uh, that would be one that I think more people might gravitate towards due to it's uh, yeah, it's not available everywhere. It's a little bit harder to find. But again, that cover A is the one that you'll probably be able to still find in those cheap boxes. Uh, as well as, I, I know there was also a one shot with uh, Cassian and the uh, K2SO, but I think it's been revealed that K2SO is not going to be in this or may not show up maybe till the end. It kind of takes place before he, he hooks up with his uh, trusty droid there. But that's still another one that's uh, out there because... Those books were produced at a time where, where Star Wars isn't where it's at now, but yet Marvel was really producing a lot of issues. They were producing a lot of content, and a lot of shops were just getting filled with a lot of these back issues, and they've just been filling those cheap ends for a while now. And now books like the Mace Windu series and the, the Kanans and what have you, they're all kind of getting hot in for issues, random issues here and there, and uh, it's causing everybody to go back into those boxes if, you know, for the cheap ends to find these Star Wars books. But these are just a few that you still might be able to find out there. So, uh, you know, just keep an eye out for them. So hopefully you like this. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we do something else fun next week. I'm not sure what I'm going to cover next. And uh, if you are watching this on my channel, you know, stick around during the credits. And I've got a couple of more honorable mentions for you. But otherwise, I will see you guys all next week. Oh, and uh, please... You know, like, subscribe to my channel, to Tales from the Flip Side, and uh, bookmark the comicbookinvest.com website because that is just daily content getting pumped out there every day, just good stuff. I, I know uh, recently had a lot of Marvel news, kind of, uh, you know, rumors and whatnot dropped this past week, and uh, we're just quick to provide you some lists of first appearances and all kinds of stuff from the fellows out there who are just doing excellent, excellent work. Uh, thanks to Jason for those uh, Black Panther uh, first set. He just right there on a, on, a, on a dime it was out there for everybody to uh to go look into and that's something that maybe i'll look at next week maybe we'll look at some of the black panther and some of these uh thunderstrike rumors that kind of hit while uh while i was planning to do star wars i don't know but uh with that uh i'll see you guys next week